I'm going to talk about a 240 volt um, split phase 120 volt um, off grid issue. If you're using 240 volt split phase for to get 220 volt feeds, a potential problem that you can run into. But before we get into that, let's talk about how the normal grid power service operates, where the power grid comes in and provides you with a 240 volt speed feed split into two phases around a neutral so that you can get two 120 volt circuits which are basically out of phase. And these come in at the full rated power available from your utility. Generally houses are have main circuit breakers coming in on the order of about 100 amps. And then the 220 volt circuits wander off to feed who knows what, anything and everything in the house. Um, not necessarily a lot of regard to sharing loads, although perhaps some house builders make some attempt to um, distribute the heaviest loads. But basically, once you start using it, people go start plugging things in indiscriminately. You've never had to worry about this because with the 100 amps on each feed, well, you got a lot of power there. The 240 itself um, generally goes to feed things like um, dryers and uh, real heavy, heavy drain equipment of that nature. So that's your basic grid power source. You got um, 240 split phase to give you 220 volt feeds. You never have to worry about it and life goes on and everybody's happy. So now in part two of our 120 volt, 240 volt um, discussion, for off-grid, a particular situation that we had to deal with was that I've got a generator, and like most of your bigger generators, a 7 kilowatt Kubota generator, or you may be using a, uh, a, a 240 split inverter. Either way, there'll be a maximum current capability coming out of it. In the case of the invert or the uh, generator, that's um, there's a there's a circuit breaker on the panel rated at 35 amps, which pretty much defines how much current you want to pull from those lines. So the one of the 120 volt lines feeds um, one inverter, primarily for refrigerator freezer circuit that's a 24-7 deal, and various other loads because the circuit, you know, goes to other places around the house to outlets and, you know, things that you could plug just about anything into. And then the second inverter is the one that handles most of the heavy loads. And the heavy loads are like microwave, cooler, window, washer, dryer, dishwasher, vacuum, car lift. Any of the heavy loads are generally on inverter too. So the one dilemma that I ran into is a situation where I found that I was pulling 20 amps off of this inverter, and I was pulling 38 amps off inverter two. And that worried me a little bit because if this load kept increasing too much more, it's gonna trip the breaker, which is gonna trip both circuits, it's gonna take the inverter off, I mean the uh, generator offline. But more importantly, I realized that, you know what, if these were evenly distributed, that was that would be like, 58 amps, which is about 29 amps out of each one of these circuits. So if, if I could balance that, I mean truly balance it, um, and when you look at the, the current capability and the voltage out of the, out of the generator, you can get up to 8.4 kilowatts if you observe that constraint. So there is a problem with the balancing of the power on these. And even with an inverter, inverters may or may not have a breaker, they certainly do have an internal current limit that works much the same way. So um, it's definitely a consideration with either a split phase inverter or a split phase generator. And again, with an on-grid home, you just don't have this concern because the grid really is so big, it doesn't care about your petty little imbalance in the amount of power that you're drawing. So next one, we're going to look at um, what we did to, to, um, 
to, you make the maximum use of the power out of the generator. And, and just for information purposes, refrigerator freezers, we figured out, draw about 100 watts normally and 500 watts when they defrost. And this power is only drawn when the compressor runs, and this is only drawn during the defrost intervals. So next, I'm going to go into what our solution was to make maximum use of the power coming out of the uh, generator. Well, to solve my dilemma of the imbalanced 240-volt um, split phase, the solution to any engineer that's out there is utterly simple. And you probably were thinking the same thing before we arrived at it. A transformer. 240 volts to 120 volts. Of course, any engineer knows that at 7 plus kilowatts, that's a big transformer. And it is about 70 pounds, I recollect. Pretty big guy. Now, when I was looking for transformers, I found a much less expensive one built by our friends on the other side of the planet. Well, when I got that one shipped in and sat down to finish the assembly on it because the external connectors were loose and this and that, and even, even the uh, transformer core needed to be tightened up. So I get that all done, and I test it by hooking it to my 240 volts and hooking it to a light load, um, about 20 amps or so, and turning the power on. The first thing that bothered me was the amount of noise I got from that transformer, because a, a properly designed transformer is pretty practically noiseless. The other problem I had was even with the light load, the transformer was getting hot. Not warm, hot. That definitely raised alarm bells because this thing is gonna have to sit unattended. Generally, the generator runs for at least two, maybe three hour cycles. It's outside in the power housing and I, I don't wanna play nursemaid to a transformer. So the one that came from the other side of the planet really didn't measure up to my requirements. So I found a company called AccuPower, which is located in California, and on their website, I found a transformer rated at 6 kilowatts and ordered one of those. It's, it's roughly around $1,300. It's not cheap, it's heavy, but it was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. I got it in, an absolute work of art, everything there properly assembled. I installed it. I hooked power up at the low load, no noise whatsoever, none, zero. And as during over the years, I've had it in for about a year and a half now, even at full load, it, you can put your hand on it. It's only comfortably warm, not even approaching the word hot. Uh, one of the engineers there says, oh, transformers can always run hot. I, I think that was one of the less experienced engineers and, and he, he his English wasn't real good, so maybe he didn't interpret the difference between hot and warm real well. But the transformer runs cool, it runs quiet, and it's been very, very reliable. And the, what it's done is it's evened out the draw off of my generator so that I can take full advantage of the full power capability out of that generator. Now, in generators, if you're doing it with an inverter, um, I've got a problem with a generator that doesn't necessarily apply to the inverter. but each of these phases comes off of a different part of the stator coil. And I'm something of a perfectionist, and I really would like that, st that stator coil to be operating in a condition of full balance, rather than having un unbalanced magnetic fields around it. Um, I, I've learned a lot about the reliability of stator coils. I've done other videos on the subject. And this, again, is just one of those purest things that I'm really glad to see. And it allows us to tap the full ability of the generator. So the solution is pretty simple. Just a great big transformer, but you can't kid around with the quality of that transformer. One last afterthought on the transformer, this is, this is the transformer here, is that the rated power of the transformer is six kilowatts. 
And in this discussion, I've been talking about a generator rated at 7 and really capable of supplying 8.4. And just to um, make sure I, I protect my credibility, one only need to look at the data sheet for the AccuPower transformer to see that they have recommendations for uh, short-term as well as long-term overloads. And I, if they've rated this transformer like a real transformer manufacturer does, that six kilowatts is rated up to some very high ambient temperature also. And my highest ambient temperature here is gonna be about 45 degrees C. So um, this transformer is proved reliable. I'm confident that it handles the power that uh, I'm using. And it's done the job for me for a year and a half now. The last diagram that I did didn't really represent the exact connection of the auto transformer that takes the 240 feed and turns it into a pair of one. Well, actually, I turned it into one 120 feed in the previous diagram, but in real life, I have a pair of 120 volt feeds into the house, as I pointed out way back at the start. And by taking those feeds off of each of the hot lines, the high current that flows through those lines doesn't really have to go through the transformer. In fact, what actually happens is because these are out of phase, um, there's a certain amount of cancellation of the current flow in this line. And the whole idea um, just acts to minimize the amount of current that the big transformer has to support and just kind of take something of a load off of the transformer. And this is a very popular way of generating a neutral connection on a 240 line using this auto transformer type technique. Um, kind of a clever way to do it.